needed help on offense, and he called the best available man he knew, Danny Ford, and I don't think it goes any deeper than that. Yeah, Coach Kynes knew his defense was good. Now he needs to pump up the offense if he is to upset 16th-ranked Georgia. That's the storyline today as the Hogs at homecoming host the dogs. An interdivisional matchup this afternoon as Georgia from the east travels to Arkansas to face the Razorbacks from the west. And down on the sidelines to report throughout the afternoon, here's our own Bob Kessley. Thanks, Paul. There's a lot of uncertainty on the Georgia side of things. Basically, this has been a long trip for them to Fayetteville, their first trip in here. They bus from Athens to Atlanta, took a charter to Joplin, Missouri, then they took an hour and 45 minute bus ride yesterday. They're staying about 40 minutes from here at a resort. In fact, it's not a hotel. The players had their own condominiums, two or three per condominium, but there wasn't that team atmosphere. In fact, on bed check last night, they had to use golf carts to go around from condominium to condominium. Then this morning, they bus another 45 minutes to get to the stadium. Ray Goff has some serious concerns about how his team will react to all the travel, whether they'll be wary. They don't have their band here, so they're pretty much on their own against Arkansas. And another thing to consider, guys, this is the only their first game on turf all season, the only game they'll play on turf. And Ray Goff is also concerned about how his team will react to that. The Georgia Bulldogs come into Razorback Stadium and we'll be back with the opening kickoff after we pause for a word from your local station. Georgia at 3-1, and 2-1 one, and one in the SEC. Arkansas a win and a loss in conference action. 1-3 and three overall, the only victory over South Carolina. You could not ask for a nicer setting or a lovelier afternoon. 62 degrees, a slight breeze. Absolutely no chance of rain. It is homecoming here, and the fifth time that these two teams have ever met, the first ever matchup in the regular season. They played uh, last December in Shreveport, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, in the Independence Bowl, and Georgia winning that one. The Razorbacks play well when the alums from the state over return to Razorback Stadium, don't they? Arkansas has won the toss, elected to receive, and Ron Dickerson is just about as good as they come. The senior three-year letterman out of State College, Pennsylvania. A week ago, he threw across the field to the man on the right side of your picture, and Oscar Malone, who raced 99 yards for a score against Memphis State. And it is Dickerson losing the ball over his head at the five, back into the end zone, and Arkansas will begin first and 10 from its 20-yard line. The Razorback quarterback today, a third-year player in Jason Allen, a sophomore in terms of eligibility, drawing the starting assignment at homecoming, the dream of every college quarterback. Well, Jason Allen has did a wonderful job last year until he got hurt against Baylor, injured his knee. They put in a new offense during the offseason. He couldn't really work during the spring, and that might be hampering his performance thus far this year. First and ten, you see Oscar Gray, a fullback, and the second man through, cradling the ball, and out to the 24-yard line is Savage. It is Allen Jackson, Malone, Caldwell, Dickerson, and Botkin, and Dickerson can really fly. And for the offensive line, weighing in with tackles Oliver and Cornish at nearly 280 apiece, guard Isaac Davis gets around at 300 pounds, Tommy Jones over the football. So Savage and Gray, a new running back combination for Arkansas. And Savage runs into his own man and will be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Defensively, as the front wall stuffs that play, opening with seniors Wallace and Jackson at the tackles and the junior Casey Barnum heads up on the football. The linebacking core, too is stout. They have a young pup back there and Randall Gottfried, a freshman. Only 18 years young, Tim. Destined for greatness. It's third and six here. Possession snap for Arkansas and here's where they have struggled throughout this still young season. Allen looking, gets time, dumps it off complete to the 30 to 31 yard line, losing the football after picking up the first down Caldwell. Or rather, Edie Jackson out of the backfield. And it will belong to Arkansas and a first down. 
important for Arkansas to maintain possession of the football during this game. The best way to stop Georgia's offensive might is to keep them sitting down on the bench. Thus far, Arkansas's offense this year has not done well maintaining possession of the football, and that's what Joe Kynes wants to get accomplished today. Dickerson in motion on first down. Savage with the toss. A tough couple. Savage has not started a game this year. It has been Jackson and Malone primarily. There you see Barnum at 265, flanked by Wallace at 275, and Jackson the lightest of the three at two and a quarter. A lot of share in Georgia. And Randall Godfrey, who takes over for the injured Torrey Evans, the weak side linebacking position. And Al Jackson, a four-year starter at the corner position, has to play strong safety this afternoon due to injury. And they move him into strong safety, and then Pledge, Pledger moves up and plays the corner. Again, Savage straight ahead. Second effort. Three more. Danny Ford arriving this week and saying his emphasis, Tim, was going to be on straight-ahead blocking. Nothing fancy. We asked Ray Goff if he went back and looked at any Clemson, Clemson film. He said, no, I remember that stuff. You know, Danny Ford was not necessarily known as an innovative offensive coach. He's tough, hard-nosed, and that's what he teaches, and that's what they're going to try to develop here. You, they're not going to be a lot of changes. Joe Kynes knows he can't make wholesale changes in a matter of four days. But they can change their attitude, and they're going to adjust their philosophy a little bit. The sixth play on the opening possession for Arkansas, and it's incomplete. The intended pass from Allen headed toward the junior split in Tracy Caldwell. And Arkansas will have to punt. And as Ray Goff knows, a week ago, punting was a disaster for the Razorbacks. They had four blocks. Yeah, they did. That was that lat previous play was unfortunate. Allen had him open, and he just the, the nose of the ball turned over on him, didn't get it there. They had a real problem getting any punts off against Memphis State. They had a personnel problem that they think they've solved. Let's see. Pete Rather does get this one away, and he hits it a ton. It's out of here. Andre Hastings from his five starts to his right and is out of bounds at the 10-yard line. And Arkansas, with that punt, has pinned Georgia. Back against its own goal line in a scoreless first quarter. There's timeout in the action back after this. Just underway in Fayetteville. Bob Kessling to Foley on Paul Kennedy, Georgia, with its opening possession in this scoreless game. Todd Zier has heralded a signal caller, or Eric Zier rather, to play for Georgia since. Uh, Yes, the Bulldogs head coach, Ray Goff, more than a decade ago. From his 11-yard line. And the pitch, and losing. Three yards, Max Strong. Owen Kelly, the fifth-year senior nose guard, number 91. Knives in to drop him for a loss. There is Eric Zier, the SEC player of the week for his performance against the Rebs. Last year, the SEC Freshman Player of the Year. Everything that you want in a quarterback. Great leadership skills, intelligence, studies the game, works hard at it, good feet. Everything that you're looking for is in that package right there with the number 10 on it. Second down and needing a dozen. Hastings wide to the near side. Ball having to the top of your screen. Airborne for the first time, and that's caught. Near the 20-yard line and very close to a first down. The tight end, Shannon Mitchell. The skill players are absolutely spectacular, as you see Hastings and Bohannon with Zaire to throw the football, and Mitchell, the man who made that catch. And the front line, stout with Jack Swan, who's going to be a physician to snap it. It is third down and two. Strong and Hurst behind Zaire. Hurst takes the inside handoff and makes a miss enough off the right side to pick up the first for the dogs. The Razor in. Ray Lee Johnson makes that tackle. Their most consistent player you see leading the defensive line. The linebacking core spearheaded by the man on the strong side, senior Tyrone Chapman, along with Kempf, the leading tackler, and Ireland, who's really a cover guy, and the secondary offering the solid Orlando Waters and Dean Peavy, very quick, on the two-quarter. A fresh set of downs for the dogs. 
Play action, Zaire. Looks left, throws left. It's nearly picked off and in and out of the hands of Garrison Hurst. Great defense by Arkansas. Good read by Zaire. It was good disguise. They had him fooled. They tried to throw the hitch. It wasn't there. Then he came back, went to his second receiver. Nice fake there. Boom. And you're going to see Ireland, who did an excellent job, number 16, running with running with that man. Uh, PV is there to make the interception, but excellent coverage. Darwin needs to work on his catching a little bit, but excellent coverage by Arkansas. Hastings and Bohannon double up the far side. First and strong, still in the backfield. Again, play action, and crossed it on the wall. Zaire gets it away, and it's dropped. Would have been picked up. Alfred Jackson, the strong safety. The junior cannot hold up. <laughs> Joe says, that's okay, boys. There's Joe. He's worked with defense for a long time. He knows they can't catch. Not a problem. Good positioning. They're, they get pressure here, which is the first thing that you have to do on Zaire. Good job by uh, Long upfield. He scoots him out of there. Zaire fires back against the grain, and Al Alfred Jackson, who's number 29, playing hurt, just can't hang on to the ball. That's two opportunities that Arkansas could have gotten a turnover if they've uh, let get by him. Number 10 needs 10. Runs the shuffle pass. No serve. Hurst is stuffed by Darwin Ireland. And the Razorbacks are going to get the football back. Owen Kelly, the fifth-year senior, the fiery nose guard, made the stop. And the punt for the first time, Scott Armstrong for the dog. Owen Kelly, after the Alabama game, he's a fifth-year guy. He went and took the, the medical admission boards. And uh, a great student, too. For a line, especially. Orlando Water waits to field the punt from his 34. A couple. Georgia can't move the ball. The Razorbacks have it back. We are scoreless. More after this word from your local station. Thirty-seven-year-old Ray Goff in his fourth season coaching his alma mater, the former Southeastern Conference Player of the Year in 1976, knows his nationally ranked dogs have their hands full this afternoon at homecoming in Fayetteville. And the handle and fighting out of the backfield and up there losing three yards as a flag goes down as Oscar Malone, who did not start today, Tim. The true freshman expected to go. It was Jeff Savage. Yes, it was. Well, they had a problem in the sense that uh, Tony Jeffries hurt his knee, and they are now using some people that haven't had a lot of experience. They've got Marius Johnson, a true freshman. Oscar Malone getting his first experience, but uh, it was, he was a Proposition 48 guy, so I guess they call him a sophomore. And Jeff Savage are going to be carrying the ball. Those three rascals. Face mask on the defense. Run in it behind the line. Five-yard penalty. Previous five. Repeat, first down. Arkansas has got to run the, they have to run the ball on Georgia. In the, in the first four games, they've shot themselves in the foot repeatedly. And so what they're going to try to do is just settle down and run it at them. And uh, Oscar's got to turn it upfield. In this game plan, you have to run north and south. Georgia has really come along on defense. Richard Bell's done a great job developing a group of guys that a lot of people didn't think would be very good. A fresh set of running backs. As you see, Florida State hunting Miami down in the Orange Bowl. First quarter just ending. Oscar Malone, the tailback. Carlton Calvin, now the fullback. And we haven't seen a great deal of two-back sets out of the Hawks this year. No, but I think you'll see more of it with Danny Ford there. If they're giving Danny Ford the ability to have some input, Play action. Allen going deep. Hunting Caldwell. He overshoots him and it's nearly intercepted. Charles Pledger bobbled the ball at the 15 yard line. Let's check in with Bob Kessler. 
You know, Paul, the, I guess the big question out here is how much input is Danny Ford having? And as he's not calling plays, but it is interesting to watch him. He goes from the offensive backs, then to the linemen, and then back and forth. And whether or not the Arkansas scheme has changed, you get the feeling that perhaps there is a bit more confidence, at least that Danny Ford is here in the Arkansas offense right now. Well, unless he unless he's uh, on a on a uh, ardent fitness program, his heart rate's up more than it's ever been in the last couple of years. <laughs> Second down and five, and the tailback, and Malone has the first down as he nears midfield. That's it, Oscar. That's the way to run upfield, straight ahead. Make your move. Now he's just a little rascal. <laughs> he doesn't make a very big hole when he goes through there, so he he could run under the table actually probably and get it done. Only 5'9", great speed and quickness out of Gadsden, Alabama. Let's see what he has to look for. Tommy Jones blocking there, Davis, Straczynski. Zoom, 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 a little spip and a pop, and defensive back up there to make him the hit was Greg Trimble. Receivers to either side, two yards shy of midfield in Arkansas with a fresh set of downs. Malone, another first down to the Georgia 41-yard line. A gain of 11, and Greg Tremble, the free safety, had to come up and make the hit. Good read by Malone, takes it upfield, and the offensive line for Arkansas able to split the Georgia defense. Buster Owens gets there, watch this now. Just a good job of contact blocking. Casey Barnum not able to get rid of the blocker. Torrey Evans overruns a little bit, first down Arkansas. E.D. Jackson now in the game, and he takes the handoff. And the right side of that Razorback offensive line pushes Georgia back. Jackson, number eight, is a fellow the dogs are very familiar with. He rushed for uh, 112 yards against Georgia in the Independence Bowl a year ago and uh, scored two touchdowns. E.D., extremely dangerous. Or if you're his mother, Edward Donald. You know, take your pick. <laughs> Good little running back, led this team in rushing for the last two years. And again, fresh jersey, in Savage the tailback, and Gray the fullback as Arkansas begins to drive. Savage, the first down to the 30-yard line. Joe Pine, who we met in his office yesterday, told us that his defense was good enough, uh, good enough to stay with Georgia. If only his offense could keep him off the field a while and earn first downs, and that's what they're doing right now. And that's what they're doing right now, exactly. A missed tackle by the linebacker. Georgia's got to get back to the basics. You know, if, if, there was, if there was an atmosphere for an upset, this would be it. Georgia's been playing so well, and there have been so many unroutine things going on this week for Georgia. At the guard, 30 yard line. Let's see what Savage can do sweeping the right side, and not much there. A good job by Al Jackson, the senior cornerback, four-year letterman, to make the play. So you just can't hesitate. You got to go. You know, the longer you stand in one place, the, the more crowded your environment's going to become. You know, you just got to hit it and get out of there right now. And uh, that's what Malone was doing. And Savage will eventually do the same thing if he's going to make any ground. Maybe half a yard. Tommy Jones, the center, bends over the football. No score. A second down. And here is Savage. Looks for a hole. Not much there, trying to play behind Jones' block. It's third and long for the Razorbacks. Barnum slid down the line of scrimmage, the nose tackle, and cut him down. George's defense have been playing so well, and defense is such an emotional game. See Mitch Davis there, an uh, outside linebacker who's become a, a real threat for them on defense. Good pass rusher from Mobile, Alabama. It, but defense is so emotional, as opposed to offense, sometimes it's just take care of business. You have to be ready to play when the game starts on defense, especially. This is the 11th play for the Hawks on this drive as Allen cranks it up, floats it up, incomplete. Malone could not hold on. It is fourth down. Well, Butler, the big hit. Carlo, the outside linebacker. Now, the defensive guys aren't supposed to catch him. But that's the big difference between playing in high school and playing in college if you're a running back. If you're a good running back in high school, they usually just toss you the ball and you run. But you have to be able to catch the ball coming out of the backfield. Todd Wright with that single barred face mask to attempt a 44-yard field goal. The senior, his career best, 27. He's never kicked one this long. It has the distance. 
but he pushed it off to the right side and misfires 44. And we remain scoreless with 5.20 left in the opening quarter here in Fayetteville. Arkansas and Georgia scoreless in the first quarter in Razorback Stadium. Four different hog running backs have carried the ball in the early going, but one man who's not playing today for Arkansas is standing by with Bob Gessler. Jeffrey, Sonny got hurt last week. Tony, what's your status? You want to come back and play another year, don't you? Yeah, I really do. Uh, my status as of now, I've torn my crusade, uh, anterior crusade ligament. And an interception. It is picked off by Arkansas. Alfred Jackson to the 31-yard line. Arkansas claims the first turnover of the afternoon, and it's playing right toward Joe Kimes and the Hogs early. Alfred Jackson was not supposed to play. I talked to Joe Kynes right before the game. He said he hadn't practiced all week long. Didn't think he'd be able to play. This one just slides a little bit on Zyre. Really, Shannon Mitchell doesn't make a significant effort to get the ball. Jackson playing back up, makes the interception. So far today, they've had three guys drop the ball, and that's the first one I've caught. A new quarterback in Barry Luddy takes over on this, the third series of the game for the Hawks. And he'll hand it to Malone, who cuts back and is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Charlie Clemens, the middle linebacker, the junior out of Griffin, Georgia, dropped him in his track, second down. Great job by Charlie Clemens staying at home. Good job. They try to get that backside linebacker to pursue, overrun the play. Looking for the cutback, not that rascal. He played at Northeast Oklahoma at a and Junior College last year, and uh, he was their leading tackler, and he has been a real uh, a real boon to this Georgia defense. Lonnie, a true freshman at the helm. The left-hander throws to the boundary, and Dickerson can't make the catch, and he was open. Arkansas has been dropping the ball early. <laughs> well... That's Ron Dickerson, Jr. I played with his dad in Miami. He's now the defensive coordinator for Clemson out there with uh, Ken Hatfield. And uh, Ron, Ron, his dad, is, is, was a great guy and a wonderful player. And this, this guy is just a spitting image of that. You know, just a wonderful kid, good character. Played running back the first two years. Still getting a handle on catching the ball. And he'll make the spectacular catch, and then he'll drop one like he just did. Third and nine. Setting up the screen. Tipped. And then off the chest of the intended receiver and E.D. Jackson. A good series defensively for the Dogs. Mitch Davis, the outside linebacker, got his hand on it. I don't care who the offensive coordinator is. You know, you could you could bring in Omar Sharif as far as that goes. <laughs> you know, if you don't catch the ball, you can't uh, complete a pass. And good job by Lunny. He, he snuck it in there. Mitch Davis got a piece of it. And uh, that obviously bothered E.D. Jackson. This is a 48-yard field goal try now for Wright out of the hold of Jason Allen. He missed moments ago from 44. Arkansas could really use some points. Confidence in playing the heavily favored dogs. From 48, again it has the distance, but again it's wide right. So twice Todd Wright has pushed it off to the right side. And with 421, Remaining in quarter number one, it's a nothing-nothing football game. Good kick just leaves it out to the right a little bit. Good distance. Oh, you know, life is lonely when you see it heading out that direction. Ray Goff playing on the road. The one and only time his team has to play on turf. Bob Kessling told you of his concern in traveling here to Fayetteville. Garrison Hurst attracts attention as he sweeps the right side. Shannon Wright, the reserve middle linebacker, taking over for Kevin Kemp, came up to make the tackle. Here's some uh, some Goffs, gray hair, growing thoughts. <laughs> the last time they played on the turf and it was homecoming was Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt beat Georgia. They're here without their band. They're here without their cheer, uh, without their pep group. They're here without their mothers and fathers. <laughs> Strong shifts by action. Zaire fires and no. Andre Hastings cannot hook up. 
Both sides having trouble holding on to the football. Zyers completed just one pass in five tries. The thing about Zyers is he takes such good care of the football in terms of ball security. They do not turn it over. Last year he threw the ball 286 times and it was an SEC record, only four interceptions. Less, a little bit more than 1% of the time, and that's just that exception. There's the story, you hear the crowd. Zyre, needing a half dozen yards, operates from the shotgun. Strong stays in the block. With all the time in the world, over the middle he goes, that's a first down at midfield. Hassan Graham makes his first catch of the afternoon. The sophomore from Takeda, Georgia. That time they put Hastings into the sideline, figuring that he would draw the coverage. Two wide receivers to Zyre's left. And they find Graham across the middle of the field. Good job, good job. Sits there, looks, looks, pats the ball. Hassan Graham comes up with the catch. That's one that can be picked off from the backside if the linebackers paying attention. Georgia in the Razorback territory for the first time today, and Hurst runs through a tackle, and on second effort, earns the Arkansas 45-yard line. You cannot afford a half-speed step when the ball is in, in that guy's arms. And he's going to explode sometime during the game, just like that one. He almost got out of there that time. Three guys had a hold up, and he almost squirted free. A week ago against the Rebels of Ole Miss, he took a short pass from Zyre and raced 63 yards through the reps for a touchdown. Perhaps the best all-purpose back ever in Athens, and that is saying a lot. Second down for Zyre. Under heat, throws it nearly intercepted at the 40-yard line. Dean Peavy, the corner, one-on-one -on -one out there with Graham, had a chance at another interception. Scott Long provided the pressure on Eric Zyre. He had enough time to get it off. Arkansas is just confusing the young man a little bit right now. And, and as you said, Peavy was standing right next to the receiver the whole time. Two and a half minutes remaining in a scoreless first quarter. A bit of a surprise here. Graham to the far side. Bohannon wide to the near side, and that is Hastings in the slot. Over the middle. Graham, no. In and out of his hands, thrown behind him, and he took a shot as well from Orlando Waters. And it's fourth down for the dog. They came back and ran the same pattern to the other side, Paul. Put Hastings into the sideline, threw it back toward the wide side of the field, try to get some, get it open across the middle. They're planning on Hastings being double teamed, that extra man being drawn by Hastings. And he had it, just threw a little bit behind him, and then Waters knocked him off the ball. Armstrong trying to kill it in the corner. Floats it toward the end zone, and it will land in the end zone, and uh, the Hawks begin first and 10 from their 20-yard line. And at homecoming, the Razorbacks are staying with the Bulldogs. Are they not, Tim? They are staying with the Bulldogs, and this is not really a surprise to anybody. Because Arkansas has played good football on defense. Ray Goff knew that he'd come off a couple of big wins, and he's got his team going through hoops that they've never been through before. You, you hate to, if you're a head coach, you hate a change in routine. Uh, this is the most mature team he feels like he's had since he's been head coach, but you know, the emotions of a 20-year-old youngster are pretty volatile. You know, they can start thinking that they're pretty good and, and, and be vulnerable to an upset. Jason Allen returns at quarterback and a more conservative Malone off to the right side. And speaking of uh, running backs, let's go down to the sideline again. And Bob's still there with Tony Jeffrey. Oh, you know, yeah, Jeffrey early. Tony, talk about the offense and the, you're, you're being not there, how that's going to affect it today. Uh, right now, it's not affecting them at all. They're looking real good trying to move the ball. Uh, the offensive line is giving Jason a lot of time to pass it. Uh, I, I really don't see them uh, missing me a lot. What Talk about what the any changes this week in practice in terms of philosophy or style or just back to hard-nosed football? Exactly. Uh, they they decided to simplify the offense, get the, uh, get the blocks a little easier for the linemen so that uh, we can open up big holes. And uh, that's, that's what's happening right now. They're opening up good holes, and the running backs are running hard. 
Tony, I hope you get your medical so you can come back and play one more year of the Hogs. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Tony Jeffries, Paul. Thank you, Bob. What a running back he is. And when you get a ground game going, well, that opens up your passing game, Tim, and Caldwell on the receiving end. And here Jason Allen looks like the quarterback that he is. He goes back, sets up, and lets it fly, puts it right on the money. Chris Wilson trying to corral Caldwell there, but, you know, he looked like the quarterback that he could be. Malone, you could hear that whack all the way up here after the gain of 20 yards. It'll be second down and nine. Big senior Tom Wallace, number 92 at 6'6", 275. Stood in the hole. They lost seven defensive linemen, Georgia did, before the season started. You know, three to academics, one to just see you later, and uh, three guys quit. And so they've got some young, uh, lighter folks playing out of position in there, but they've got more team unity than they've had in the last several years. Cotto Clotten to the far side, Dickerson in motion, and that opens up the middle a bit. And out across the uh, 45 to the 46, it's E.D. Jackson. And I will say this, that uh, Jason Allen has done an expert job of running this offense, earning first downs. He had a drive of 11, 12 plays earlier in the quarter for this 21-year-old sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. But what his job is as quarterback is to get the ball into the end zone, and he knows that. He's, he's been playing this position for a while, and they've got to get some points on the board. This will be the final play of the first quarter. Back to the near side, it is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Kirk Botkin. And we have played 15 minutes of football in Razorback Stadium, and we are scoreless. And we'll be back right after this. SEC football is brought to you in part by Shoney's Breakfast Bar, the best breakfast in town. Bob Kessling, Tim Foley, I'm Paul Kennedy. Arkansas punts to open the second quarter, and again, Rayther hits a boomer. Better than 60 yards and into the end zone. And he is atoning in a big way for the problems last Saturday night in Memphis. Well, he was not the source of the problem in Memphis. You know, the wall fell in on him. You know, he was ready to do his part, getting it off in good time, but they just weren't blocking people last week. And uh, this guy's an exceptional athlete. He was a pitcher for the baseball team, had a problem with his shoulder, and he's used to pressure. And uh, punt rushes don't bother him, but you got to keep people out of there. Got to get in their way a little while. Eric Zier completed but two passes in the first quarter. He's thrown for 27 yards. The inside handoff to Hurst, and there is running room. And a first down, a gain of 10, if not 11, for Garrison Hurst. You know, they compare him to Herschel, and in terms of the numbers, in Herschel's junior year, he was averaging four yards a carry. Here is Hurst averaging better than seven yards a carry this season. Yes, it, you know, in terms of size or real power, I don't think you can compare him to Herschel or George Rogers or some of the other people, but just in terms of his, his ability to make people miss and his all-purpose ability, his ability to catch the ball coming out of the backfield and pick the blitz up when he needs to. I think that's what Ray Goff was talking about. I don't think he's necessarily saying that this guy, one-on-one, -on -one, is a better runner than Herschel Walker. I think what he's saying is that the package there is more complete than the package that you get with Herschel Walker. I'll take either one, either one of them, but they'll be fine. I'm sure that Ray would assume that uh, these guys stay around for a while. Second down and nine. Solely, the freshman made it stop a moment ago for Arkansas. And Zyre on the roll. Throws underneath, and Strong makes the catch and is right at the first down marker. Earns it across the 40. Out of bounds into the Bulldog bench at the 41. Willie Johnson, the linebacker, in on the stop. Arkansas has a number of its second stringers playing at the moment. And Wayne McDuffie is the offensive coordinator here at Georgia's trying to take advantage of something that Arkansas is doing on defense. Actually, it's not something Arkansas is doing. It's just that you have to respect Andre Hastings every, every time he leaves the huddle. And so what they're doing right on that play anyway, ran some stuff underneath, a little roll away from Hastings. We are scoreless early in the second quarter. 
On first down, nice fake by Zaire. On the roll, wide open, Mitchell the tight end, a pit gainer inside the Arkansas. 45 to the 43. Another good call, Andre Hastings to the wide side is being double teamed. They fake the run here. The tight end holds for a moment, then releases to the outside, and Shannon Mitchell makes the catch. Ten yards, first down. Georgia begins to move. That was a gain of 17. And the tailback, Hurst, cuts right, back to the left, and earns four. He runs so well in the line of scrimmage, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And Darwin Ireland did a nice job there of staying at home. Hurst is a backdoor guy. When he gets the ball in the eye formation, he's going to be looking for the back door. He's going to look for everybody to overrun it, and then he's going to try to sneak out the backside for 60. Ireland's the best athlete they have on this uh, Arkansas defense. He's watching the door. Bryce Hunter wide to the left side. Hurst heads this way. Hunter gives him some help. He's at the 30. Out of bounds at the Arkansas 25. And the dogs now are driving. On Arkansas, that is a gain of 14. Del Deco, the reserve free safety, made the tackle. That time, a little bit too much attention paid to the Georgia wide receiver. They didn't get a safety in there. Good job of double teaming. Kemp gets stuck inside. The tight end gets a hook, and there's nobody there. Hurst is around the, uh, around the end without any obstruction. Here is Straw with a hole that closes quickly to the 22-yard line, and the leading tackler for the Hogs entering this game, number 57, Kevin Kemp, made the stop. Junior college transfer. Comes out of Rick's Junior College. That's out there in Idaho. Picked up the system in a hurry. He's a big, strong, tough, kind of Dick Butkus type fella. You know, not, not somebody that you necessarily want wanting running with uh, Garrison Hurst in terms of pass coverage, but he can fill a hole. Terrell Davis is the tailback in the eye. Zyers calling the play at the line of scrimmage. And it is Davis who stretches it inside the 20 to the 19-yard line, and Scott Long, the 265-pound defensive tackle, is there for the Hawks. Third down. This is the best shape this Georgia offensive line has been in since, uh, well, in recent years anyway. And again, you can credit Wayne McDuffie for that tough, hard-nosed guy that works these fellas hard. They may not be the most talented, but there isn't going to be anybody in the country that works harder than they do. Big play for Georgia and the Hawks on third and along fourth. Zaire, incomplete. Looking to hook up over the middle for Bohannon. Kevin Kempf was there defensively, and it is fourth down, and the field goal unit will trot on. Zaire wanted to go to the tight end. Paul Etheridge was the tight end, came down and hooked. And, you know, as he gets more experience, he'll learn to drift away from that linebacker. Kemp was right there with him. Usually the good tight ends, they'll push off a little bit. Todd Peterson with a 30 yard try dead on and with distance and the first points of the afternoon are registered here in Razorback Stadium it's three to nothing Bulldogs there's a timeout in the action back after this senior Todd Peterson drilling a 36 yard field goal has posted our first points on the board a man to the left Dickerson to the near side right. That is, of course, Malone and Peterson with the ball cocked on the tee. He hit that one a ton. Arkansas will begin from its 20-yard line in what has been a very low-scoring affair, Tim. Arkansas had a couple of opportunities early to intercept the ball on defense. They had a couple of opportunities on offense to score, but uh, the field goals eluded them. And Ray likes that one. Good job. A nice double-digit drive. Ten plays. 61 yards. And you see the time it took. Take advantage of your opportunities. That's the name of this game. Allen under center. From his 20-yard line. 
to roll and throw. To the boundary. A gain of six and out of bounds. Kirk Botkin, the junior tight end. The leading receiver in terms of receptions this year for Arkansas. Hauls that one in as we check in once again with Bob Kessling. Well, it's homecoming. This is Willie Oates, class of 41. We're looking for the best hog collar on the campus, and you're it, Willie. Let it rip. Good. Okay. Let's call the hogs. One, two, three. Woo! Hey! Silly! Whoa! It's her 54th straight right homecoming. <laughs> Have a good time. Will. Right. Thank you. <laughs> She's having the best time of all. Out here. Kessling and getting away in that right cross. He'd be down and out. <laughs> Jimmy, Ray, Jimmy Rayburn have insurance on this guy? Our producer. Marius Johnson, the sixth running back there, number 22, that the Arkansas offense has used today. They are platooning in the backfield. What Joe Kynes is trying to do is rotate some of these younger players in. Miami comes back and takes the lead. The single back set on third and short. Will it produce the first? Yes, it will. Dependable E.D. Jackson, the Texan, off the right side, first down Arkansas. Randall Godfrey, another freshman. What are all these 18-year-old guys doing out on the field right now? Made the stuff. It is amazing. When I was a freshman in college, I could barely find, find, a, find a locker room. These guys are playing. It's fantastic. And, uh, Godfrey is just a great talent. Played at Valdosta and a fantastic program down there. USA Today All-American. Trailing by a field goal on first down. Jackson runs out of a tackle, gets back to the ladder scrimmage, and fights forward for perhaps a yard. Georgia snuffed that one out well. Tremble, the free safety up from the secondary, credited with the stop. Mitch Davis really made the play, though. He beat the block on the line of scrimmage and caused something to happen. Here comes the fifth play in this drive. Old Ray made some coaching changes a couple years ago, brought in Ensminger and McWhorter and McDuffie, and things have really worked out well for Georgia, and they've worked out well for Joe Hollis and George Hafner, who are now coordinators at their respective schools. Meeting eight. Dickerson, the tough catch. It won't get him the first down, but he's near the 40-yard line. And Pledger, the cornerback, shoves him all the way into the Georgia sideline. That was a tough grab for Ron Dickerson. Well, that's what we said earlier. That, you know, he, he'll make the tough catch and then drop one that hits him in the chest. He's still learning how to be a wide receiver. But it, 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 when he does drag it in, don't give him much room because he can really make things happen, as South Carolina found out. Dickerson's very first reception this afternoon, the fourth completion for Allen, who looks toward the Arkansas bench, has the play, and now Arkansas is going to call timeout. Arkansas wants to talk about it on third and three with 8.54 remaining in the first half, and Georgia leads by a field goal. It's three to nothing Georgia as we remind you that the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the SEC and JP Sports prohibited. On third down, following the timeout, Allen swings it out. E.D. Jackson, first down barely. Thought he might have broke that one. Ahead to the 45, and Charles Pledger in the open field made a heck of a tackle, the cornerback. Richard Bell had his secondary locked in underneath, man to man. Allen makes a good decision. And E.D. Jackson fought to get the first down yard. It's Charles, Charles Pledger did an excellent job of fighting his way back up and almost preventing that from being a first down. Allen has hit three in a row through the air. This one, though, is thrown to the wrong color jersey, and it is picked off at midfield. Georgia has the football. Greg Tremble, the free safety, steps up to earn the turnover. And this is not a bad throw by Allen. This, this ball should have been open. Greg Tremble does an exceptional job of, of reading the pattern. You know, just a well-trained secondary. He does a great job of reading the pattern and reacting to the flow. Allen looking back in there, and Tremble had responded. He didn't get driven off by that deep route that you saw behind him. Made the interception. 
Inside handoff for Georgia. And to the near side, here comes Max Strong. Down to the Arkansas 45-yard line. An opportunity for Georgia now to hold on to the football, if not break this game open a bit. Orlando Waters stays down after the tackle. You know, he's been a, just a stellar performer for Arkansas this far this year with a couple of touchdowns against South Carolina. Let's look how this happens. Out of the shotgun, Max Strong gets the handoff. Taking it upfield. Kevin Kemp there. And Waters got caught up in the in the wash there. Just hope it's nothing serious. Arkansas needs that young man on defense. He's got big play capability, and they're very inexperienced behind him. Gracie Cantwell comes in to take his place at the corner position. Sire will scramble across the line of scrimmage, and he slides close to the first down marker at the Hawks 40-yard line. Kemp, the linebacker, he's making a lot of tackles. Runs him down. That should be enough for the first. Let's watch Kevin Kemp here, but this is a wonderful job by Darwin Ireland. They tried to suck him in and run someone down the middle. He ran right with the wide receiver. Flushed Zire out, and Zire does a smart thing. Takes a slide. He doesn't need to get hit. Third inches. Perhaps four down territory. He did not pick up the first down. Out of the eye, strong hazard. Oh, he is a load, isn't he? Lowering his head and ramming the line of scrimmage. First down, dogs with 7.05 remaining before intermission and a 3-0 football game advantage, Georgia. Arkansas playing tough on defense. You know, they need to keep the pressure on. Georgia now starting to come to life a little bit on offense. And, you know, every... Every opponent is, uh, on a given day, can give you problems, and uh, Arkansas is presenting a few problems to this Georgia offense right now. Hog fans will be happy to know that Orlando Waters is okay and has re-entered the football game. Zaire, down the boundary for Hastings, he's got it! First down, Georgia at the 12-yard line. What a combination, Eric Zaire to Andre Hastings. A gain of 28. Just an exceptional throw by Zaire. They call this a fade. He ran around the corner, and, and, uh, and now he's got Zaire's got to stick it in there before the safety can get there. Alfred Jackson is coming in a hurry. The draw might have, I mean, the fake might have held him for a second, but that was just a beautifully thrown ball. Nice catch by Hastings. Zaire with Georgia threatening. Goes to Hurt, who cuts back inside the 10, down to the 5 for the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia! Garrison Hurst with this game's first TD. A run of a dozen, and it's 9-0 Bulldogs. We talked about this young man's power and his ability to break tackles. Henry Ford has him, can't really hold on. He freezes the safety. Boom. Waters can't hold on. Touchdown, great job of running by Hurst. Gets six, and there's seven. Peterson with the extra point. And Georgia's lead now in double digits with a timeout in the action. More after this from Razorback Stadium. And Tim Foley, to nothing here. And memory serves me correct, between Bob Neal, who you worked with for a decade, and Bob Carpenter, Bob Kessling, I'm the first guy not named Bob you've ever watched that game with. That's exactly right. And I think I've been doing well, haven't I? <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul. But that's good. We got a lot of Bobs, and there's Eric Zier. You sure? It certainly is a pleasure to work with you. It's having a lot of fun. We miss Bob Carpenter, but he gets to be at home with his family. He had to do a New York Mets game last night and couldn't get here in time. There you see the scoring drive. Five plays, 49 yards. It started with a turnover. A One interception by Greg Trimble. Great play by Trimble. But Arkansas might not throw the ball the next time they have it. Earlier on, they did well running the football and keeping the ball away from Georgia. Peterson customarily booms him into the end zone, and he has done it again. So with six and a half minutes to go, important here, Tim, that to Arkansas sustain on offense, and if it can't in any way put some points 
on the board. Certainly avoid letting Georgia score again prior to intermission. That's true. Their defense is playing well, and Georgia had a couple of exceptional plays. The throw from Zaire to Hastings, great play, perfectly executed, and then an exceptional effort. And Joe Kynes has got to be proud of the way his Razorbacks have played here in the first half. But they need to sustain that effort. Allen again at the helm as the toss will come back to Savage, who breaks it clean at the 30. He is at midfield. The Georgia 40 down the sidelines and out of bounds at the Bulldog 27-yard line. A gain of 52 off a very simple toss sweep. That beats a play pass for this team right now. You see Barnum upfield right now. Clemens penetrating. They do a good job of cutting off the backside linebacker. Now Savage is off to the races. Philip Daniels trying to run him down, but fi finally it's Charles Fledger that gets the job done. Just upfield. Get it upfield. Good block by Carlton Calvin. Number 39 opens the door for him, and there goes Savage. In his first career start, the sophomore. Pops a big one. First down, Razor backs. And stumbling forward, Carlton Calvin, the sophomore who had the block. Now with the ball inside the 25. Tom Wallace, the left tackle, the senior, on the stop for Georgia. The man in the center of your screen. And congratulations a week after the event to Tom and his wife, Kathy, on the birth of their son, Jacob Michael, born a week ago yesterday. All right, Tom. you look like Kathy. Hopefully. Edie Jackson to the 20-yard line. And Edie Jackson meet Greg Jackson, the converted outside linebacker playing inside the senior tackle for Georgia. Now, we don't want Tom Wallace's mother getting mad at us. No, we just always, we just always talk like that about the linemen. We know they're smart and, and suave and debonair. So we can make fun of them if we're this far away, right, Tom? <laughs> Chargers lead 10-0, and timeout is taken here by Arkansas. They're second with the football Arkansas. at the Georgia 20 and needing two on third down. Not a bad timeout at all. Not at all. Greg Jackson made that last tackle, and he's done it. He's made an interesting switch from outside linebacker to really defensive tackle. And he's probably the most consistent defensive lineman they have. He just a little on the small side at 222. But these Georgia Bulldogs are going to fight you. And more than ever before, they're together. As you see, Danny Ford. First time he's taken a suck out of a Gatorade bottle on the <laughs> sidelines in a while. Yeah, he's kind of missing the mouth there. Well, you know, splashing on that's that's the lineman, that's the lineman method. Let's go back down to field level once again. Here's Bob. Paul, I think the thing about the Arkansas defense is talking uh, right now. Joe Kynes came over during their defensive meeting just a moment ago and said, listen, guys, we're not changing anything. It's execution. You just got to tackle people and get after them. So they're not going to change. You just got to say that this next possession they've got perhaps might be the biggest of the game because they got to keep Georgia from scoring, and hopefully the Razorbacks can score themselves to stay in the game. There is not a coach in America who doesn't believe Joe Kynes deserves an opportunity at Arkansas. One of the proven veteran coaches, very respected by his Peers. He's worked at Clemson, at Florida, a coordinator at Alabama, and was, when the season began, the defensive coordinator here. But he is a fiery guy and a class act. And now he needs a first down. E.D. Jackson will not get it. The Dogs rise to the occasion, and it's Carlo Butler, the linebacker, who hits him first. And Jackson driven back, the linebackers and Butler. And you saw too, Charlie Clemens there, Mitch Davis. And now on fourth down, a 38-yard try off the leg of Todd Wright. He's misfired twice, not this time. The third time is a charm, but wait. There's a flag on the field. It's against Georgia. 
That will give Arkansas a first down. And if you're a hog, I don't think you hesitate, Tim, to pull the points off the board. No, I don't think so. I think they have to have a they have to have a win here. They have to get a touchdown. You got to take chances. And Joe knows that uh, you're talking about Joe Kynes, and, and this is his shot. And he doesn't necessarily like the circumstances under which he was hired, but this is it. First down. He is the head coach. He's not the defensive coordinator, and he can't worry about what's best for anybody but his football team right now. So he called Danny Ford in to try to help out with the offense. He's got a, a talented group of coaches on the offense, but a mind like that, like Danny's, has to help. And so he's taking his best shot. And you can expect that every game from this uh, Arkansas Razorback football team. Trailing by 10, Dickerson in motion. Late in the first half, Allen. Inside handoff, earns a couple of tough yards. Carlton Calvin, the fullback. And could there be a bigger shot for him than to upset 16th ranked Georgia at Arkansas's homecoming when he's given little chance of winning? It's opportunity for, yes, Danny Ford and the head man in Kynes today in Fayetteville. Well, some people said, well, gee whiz, Danny Ford's coming in, and maybe Danny Ford will be the next head coach here. And Joe, Joe felt like, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna get my friends in here and the best guy I can find that's available. Savage, who's been affected, penetrates the 10. And once again, Arkansas will need a couple of yards to hold on to the football. Charlie Clemens on the stop, the junior. Good job up front by J.B. Grimes' offensive line here at Arkansas, getting some movement, and Sha Savage taking it upfield. Penetrate. None of this lateral running. Georgia has got good speed on their team now. Ray Goff was talking about that. Only two guys in that defense that run over 4-8. On third down and needing three. The seventh play of the drive unfolding, aided by that Georgia penalty. Savage will not get there. Boy, Georgia is tough on third down. Damon Ward, number 53. Very aggressive for the dogs. It's fourth and two. And the field goal unit is coming in. We remember what happened the last time they had third and two, and you know, Joe wants to get some points on the board, get something on the board. Now, this is kind of a tough Jason angle. Allen, Todd Wright will attempt a 20 I don't know that he would fake a field goal here because he has just about a surefire three points and a score prior to intermission that would put him back in the game. Right. Who officially is 0 for 2. Get on. And it is good. Arkansas is on the board and trails by a touchdown with 219 remaining in the first half. And it was that long 52-yard sweep by Edie Jackson that started it all off on the right foot for the Razorbacks. Or rather, Jeff Savage, rather than E.D. Jackson, with what is officially the longest run from scrimmage this year. And there's been a lot of talk about the Danny Ford addition to the coaching staff here, Paul. And you know, Ray Goff did kind of the same thing at Georgia a couple years ago when he brought in Wayne McDuffie. I mean, Wayne had a lot of experience, offense, uh, a coordinator for Florida State, and certainly head coaching material. But Ray felt like, hey, my job's on the line. I'm going to get the best guy that I can get in here. And he brought in Wayne McDuffie. He was confident about his position and his ability, and he wanted to get somebody that could help him turn the corner with this Georgia football program. And it's just like Joe Kine says, you know, the last he checked is when you lose, everybody leaves. <laughs> and so Ray will You're tell right. you that Wayne McDuffie had a lot to do with the fact that he's still wearing the head coach and whistle at Georgia. And so Joe Kynes is trying to do that same type of thing with Danny Ford under different circumstances, of course. Right, chops at it. Georgia calls for the fair catch. It bounds. That's a free ball. Graham touches it, runs back inside his 15, and is out of bounds. Awfully dangerous there. A ball bounding around on this turn. Graham just ran to the sidelines with it. And here's the scoring drive that produced the field goal by Todd Wright. And again, the key play there, long run by Jeff Savage. Georgia has really eliminated that in their defense this year. They have given up very few 
big plays. It's kind of was a nemesis a few years ago, but they're much more consistent on both offense and defense. Zaire has three timeouts with which to work. Hurt wrapped up as he comes to the 15-yard line, and it's Wade that got him around the leg. And a good job by Ray Lee Johnson getting that thing turned in. That's the same play they ran earlier in the first quarter, and it just got outside right now. Ray Lee is probably their best pass rusher, and although he's kind of a lightweight guy, too, at uh, 217, a former outside linebacker, he can really get upfield. Second down, and nine with Hurst in motion. Zaire over the middle, incomplete, past the outstretched arm of his intended target. In Mitchell, Shannon Wright defending, and that stops the clock with 135 remaining. That was Etheridge rather than Mitchell, by the way. And now Arkansas with the timeout left. Could stop the clock here. Georgia needs this first down. Arkansas may get the ball back. Zaire backpedal to set up the shotgun. The shuttle pass. No first down for the dog. Ray Lee Johnson. Number 99 on the stop. And the clock continues to tick with 120 remaining. Arkansas just called timeout. Ray Lee, good, look at that. You know, a lineman thought that Johnson was out of the play, so he just turned up field. Don't worry about him, he's gone. <laughs> Lay Rigo, it, Ray Lee went and got back in there. Good job. Good quickness. That's the situation. Arkansas now, when it gets the football, will not have a timeout left. They have used all three. So if you're Ray Goff, gentlemen, cover this punt and cover it well. And Arkansas, they can block some kicks too, so they'll, they may come after this one. They've got Waters back there who returned to punt for a touchdown against South Carolina. <laughs> Those head coaches, you know, they, they know every bad thing that can ever happen, because usually they've happened to them at one time or another. Georgia has not had a kick blocked this year. And it doesn't appear that uh, Arkansas is doing anything but playing the turn. Chuck Strong kicks it out of there. Here's Waddy from his 37. One tackle misses. So does the second to the 40 to 41 yard line with 106 remaining in the first half. But Drew Davis. Hustle downfield to Georgia and I'll make that open field tackle. Beautiful day to go to a football game here in Arkansas. And as you pointed out in the opening, the earliest game in Arkansas football history. <laughs> Some of this crowd is just now starting, starting to wake up. Uh, Ray was concerned, Ray Goff, that there weren't going to be a lot of Georgia people here, but it's hard to tell who the Georgia people are and who the Arkansas folks are. They all got red on. Huh? Allen's last pass attempt was picked off by Georgia. That led to the scoring drive. Here he throws and batted around incomplete. The intended receiver on the play was Edie Jackson. It is second down. That stops the clock with an even 60 seconds remaining. Gonna have to reach Wood, Arkansas. I would believe at least the uh, Georgia 30-yard line to give their field goal kicker Todd Wright an honest shot at a three-pointer. Allen, five for 11 today, through the air, keeps this one on the ground. And Mitch Davis will hop on Jeff Savage's back at the uh, 43, 44-yard line. Not a bad call to make. You know, after you've watched the way they've thrown the ball in the first half, you got to be a little bit afraid when the ball leaves Allen's hands. About, not about it's not on target, but just people having trouble catching. Allen threw it away. The receiver that he was looking for, Tracy Caldwell, was uh, all covered up by Bulldogs over on the far side. 
32 seconds remaining. Georgia's defense does its job. It's three downs and out for the Hawks as halftime nears. There's Frank Orgel. He's the inside linebacker coach of Georgia. Used to be at Auburn. He's got to be happy with the way his team is starting to respond defensively now as he signals in the punt play. Rather at the knock and the guitar on the ball. Thomas deep for Georgia. And Rather has done it again. Now there is a flag down as the ball rolls into the end zone. It's thrown along the line of scrimmage. So we'll take it back to the 42 and see what the call is. Arkansas will have to do it again. Rather's enjoying one of those days like you have on the uh, golf course. When you, everything you hit is right down oh, the man. middle and 190 yards. Hammering the ball. George is going to decline the penalty. Just take it the way it is. Six man on the line of scrimmage. Kicking team. Penalty decline. First down. That's a 56 yard punt by Rather. Enjoying, I would have to believe, the best day of his career kicking the football. I don't believe I've ever seen anybody kick it like that, that consistently. 24 seconds left for Zaire and friends. From his 20-yard line. Strong the running back. Will cradle it. He comes out of there and has a first down across the 30 to the 32. That'll stop the clock for a moment. Chapman along with Ireland on the stop for Arkansas. And Georgia now says, well, if you're going to play it like that, we might think about it. You know, the sign of a really good football team is that you can win when you're not playing your best. Uh, this half, Georgia has not played its best offensive football. In the, they're still ahead in the football game. In their, nobody's running away from them. In the past, they had to give it everything they had to stay even. As you see, Mac McWhorter with the headset on talking to uh, Eric Zire. Wayne McDuffie, of course, is talking him back. The other side of the brain trust, Joe Kynes on the sideline and the hat tie there. The ball-headed fellow scratching his head, one of the best secondary coaches in the SEC, Lewis Campbell. Lewis Campbell, a great player here at Arkansas in his day. He's hoping his secondary can defend this pass by Zaire on first and ten. Eric with a lot of time. Over the metal edge. Caught by Graham at midfield. And down to the Arkansas 48-yard line. Chapman makes the stop, but not before the dogs pick up 17 more. There are eight seconds remaining. That time Hastings cut in hard across the middle. And opened the way for the ball to be thrown in behind him. That's Another timeout for Georgia here, too, Tim. And, wa and watch this gun here. I mean, he gets this Hummer off. He zips it in there. Hastings clears out of the way, and here comes Hassan Graham. Makes the catch. Hastings getting back into it. Maybe he'll block somebody. The great thing about this Georgia team is that the good players on it are also hard workers. You know, they're not worried about themselves and their own statistics. They want to do well, but they want to help this football team win. Todd Peterson, his career best, which he booted a year ago, is 48 yards in the field goal department, and he has kicked 136 today. So Georgia needs about 15 yards quickly on this play to give him a shot. Officially first down with eight ticks of the clock remaining. With time running down. Zyers going for it all to Graham in the end zone. Incomplete. Batted away by Waters, stride for stride. In man coverage, one second remaining. What a tough assignment out there for Waters. And that's where Arkansas had problems against Georgia last year in the bowl game. A couple of big plays like that. In the... Waters didn't come up with the ball, and the Georgia receiver did last year. Good job by Orlando Waters. 
very, very good year. Not the fastest cornerback uh, on this football team, but probably the one with the most football sense and savvy. Three receivers to the near side, including Evans, Thomas, and Hastings. One final shot for Georgia. The big bid. Do they tap it in the air and catch it? Oh, Hastings nearly hauled it in. It's incomplete. We are at halftime. It's a 10-3 football game, and the 45,000 in Fayetteville appreciate the job their Hogs have done as decided underdogs and just managing to play with 16th-ranked Georgia. Let's go down to the field where Bob Kessling standing by with Ray Gold. Coach, it's tough first half. How'd your team play? Well, I don't think we played particularly well, but I think you got to give Arkansas a lot of credit. They've done a good job defensively. They've kept us off balance offensively, and our offense has got to play better, and I think we're very capable of doing that. Defensively, you held them to a field goal? Well, it's, uh, you know, they've missed two. And but our defense has played well. We missed a tackle out here. We had a bad alignment. We missed a tackle, and they should have never got the 40-yard run to even have the field goal. But again, you got to give them a lot of credit. The kids are playing hard. Coach, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Ray Goff, the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. It's homecoming in the Ozarks, and Georgia leads the Razorbacks 10 to 3. And we'll be back with our halftime in just a moment. By Buick and your Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. We welcome you back to Razorback Stadium with Bob Kessling along with Tim Foley. I'm Paul Kennedy. And all our scoring came in the second quarter of play. Let's take a look at our scoring in the second 15 minutes this afternoon in Fayetteville. And it was Georgia. Scoring the first points when Todd Peterson booted true from 36 yards away in the second quarter. It was a 3-0 football game, obviously. And then Georgia scoring this game's only touchdown on a 12-yard scamper by Garrison Hurst. Sweeping the right side and into the end zone, Tim. Just a great effort by Garrison Hurst. This came as a result of an interception. Gave him field position, and Georgia took advantage of that opportunity. Just outmoved Delco and got himself into the end zone. Great individual effort by Harris, uh, Garrison Hurst. And an outstanding individual effort, too, by Arkansas's young Jeff Savage exploding for 52 yards. Great, great block by the fullback, Carlton Calvin. Opened the way for Jeff Savage, and he's getting it as fast, <laughs> fast as he can. Philip Daniels, the linebacker, gets to him, and finally... Pledger drives him out of bounds. Good hustle by Charles Pledger. And, and after missing uh, twice, Todd Wright finally connects from 26 yards away. It's a 10-3 football game, and here are our Ford statistics. And no, not Danny Ford, but the Ford Motor Company. There they are, Tim. And to take a look at the, the, the uh, situation here, Arkansas unable to throw the football. Well, one thing that's not in those statistics is Arkansas had an opportunity early on in the first possession to intercept a couple of passes. They didn't take advantage there. And uh, you know when they did get the turnover, they, they really got nothing out of it. They've got 44 passing yards and uh, in one interception. And they obviously ru are running the ball a whole lot better than they're throwing it. If they can give Jason Allen just a little bit of time and mix in the play pass to go along with the steady diet of the hounded at him kind of running that they did at the first half, then they're going to stay alive in this football game. They do not want to be in a position where they have to have to throw the ball. They're not good enough right now to do that. Georgia will get the football first as we open the second half of play. And kicking it away from Hastings, here is Graham. This rolls toward the sideline. Graham touches it. He's out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That is twice that Wright has chopped the football in that direction. Well, I guess that was the plan, and it certainly worked out well that time. Obviously, the sun's in Graham's face. Ray talking to uh, one of the coaches. Etheridge and Graham just kind of looked at each other on that one. And uh, what the back should do is come up and call for a fair catch. You can call for a fair catch in that situation. Zaire with 103 yards through the air. And that one unfortunate interception begins from his 20-yard line. And the handoff is to Matt Strong. And Strong with the flag down across the 30, the 35, 20 yards plus Strong on the carried. first snap for Georgia in the second half. And uh, we may have a holding call that will bring this one back. 
I think they might have gotten Brian Bohannon here. He's out to the wide side with Garrison Hurst. They might have called Hurst for it. Those are the two guys blocking on the wide side. One of them got the Holy. flag. On the run, 10 yard penalty. Tom. Spotted the fall. Still, first down. Can we get a replay of this? That erases a 24-yard uh, gain for Max Strong, the senior three-year letterman. Out of Columbus, Georgia, the holding call on the Can junior Brian Bohannon. View than just the guy carrying. From now the 17-yard line, if not the 18, on first down and 15. Tired. Sprint draw hurts. Daylight, 25-30, foot race, 35-40. Midfield, tiptoeing down the sidelines, and he is ruled out of bounds back at the Arkansas 49. The sprint draw, Arkansas knew it would come sometime, and finally Hurst pops one. Good job here up front. A little trap, quick trap, good block by the tight end, and this frees him. Now, he's going to look for the sideline. Alfred Jackson is hurt. He's limping. He can't respond. He can't get there. Good hustle by Gary Adams trying to get there. He's knocked off by Orlando Waters. Fortunately, her steps out of bounds would have been all the way. A gain of 35. Garrison's longest of the afternoon. He'll cradle it a second time. Cut back, and down he goes. At the 48, Owen Kelly, the fifth-year senior. He's only 5'10", but weighs better than 250. Kind of a fire plug frame. And he's got an outstanding outstanding work habits you know he hadn't missed a workout in five years let's watch him here boom boom he unroads he stays two gap unloads the guy and brings Hurst to the ground great job by Owen Kelly second down a long nine for Georgia just in the Arkansas territory Zyre play action look out here comes the heat and down he goes sacked for the first time this afternoon and yes it's Owen Kelly Arkansas gets to the quarterback. What's number 91? Owen Kelly. Good coverage by the secondary. Force Zaire to pat the ball, and Kelly got there. Let's see it from another angle. Swan sticks him. He finally gets rid of him, and a defensive tackle with a 3.7 GPA. Owen Kelly makes the tackle. And now this one has to go upstairs. Zaire will throw on third and 17 following the loss of 10. Here they come again. Over the middle, caught close to the first down sliding at the Arkansas 41. A nice grab by Brian Bohannon who ran the crossing route and slid to make the catch. Waters touched him after he was down. Fourth and two. Just short here. They're doubling Andre Hastings and uh, away from him, it's man to man. There is nobody in the middle of the field. Waters got caught trailing that time. A beautiful catch by Bo Hannon, but it's fourth down now and force a punt. Armstrong looking to pooch it in the corner. Waters calls for the fair catch, and we'll see where this one sailed across the strike. There's 12-18 remaining in this, the third quarter. The football will be spotted at the 11 when we return to Razorback Stadium after this. Arkansas takes over for the first time in this, the second half. Good defensive series for that hog defense. And now trailing by a touchdown, a sophomore Jason Allen at the helm with the eye set behind him. And it is the tailback in Savage who enjoyed a tremendous first half in his first collegiate start that gained six on his first carry of the second half. You can tell Jeff Savage is starting to feel more comfortable out there uh, on the field. You know, and, and that's what it's going to be with this Razorback team throughout the season. They're going to they're work in some of these young guys, and they're going to help them develop their football legs, get their feet up under them. But if they throw them in there full time right now, they may just burst their bubble and explode their confidence, and they'll be done. Again, Savage nearing 100 yards on the ground, jukes away from the linebacker in Davis, but Al Jackson gets it. It's third down. Take it upfield, Jeff. Good job by Al Jackson, who's filled in at strong safety. 
for the injured Mike Jones, who's back in Athens watching. And Charles Pledger also has done a nice job filling in for Jackson at the corner. Tracy Caldwell trots out to the far side with Dickerson. The flanker, important snap, 33. The toss to Savage. Can he get the three yard? No, he cannot. And Georgia stops him a yard shy. And it will be three and out for the Razorbacks. As someone said, might say, well, why don't they throw the ball? Why don't they go after it? Well, because they don't want, in the past four games, what they have done in the games that they lost is given up the ball close to their own goal line. So they want to put the ball in this rascal's hands who's you know, hitting them like hitting cannon shots out there. Yo-oh. Ten men up for Georgia. Rather tumbles this one off the side of his foot. It bounds just inside Georgia territory. Hastings now gets away from it. And it takes a Razorback roll to the 37-yard line. So it uh, ends better than it started for Rather, the first miss hit that he suffered today. I get a little bit of a, a break on the roll. You see him talking to Danny Ford. The first thing that Danny did when he arrived here after the three, four blocked punts a week ago, they sent him over to time the punters to see if they were getting it off. He had the stopwatch out. His first assignment from Joe Kynes was fix the kicking game. <laughs> well, they're getting it off on time. They just weren't getting people blocked. You know, he's going to point out things that he sees, things that he thinks can improve the overall effort here. Good effort by Max Strong, who has played well today. Tyrone Chapman, the linebacker, on the uh, tackle there. Georgia's most experienced running back and the only ball carrier to start all 12 games a season ago for the Dogs has been steady this afternoon. Now he played, Mac played as a true freshman. He's got 18 starts in his career. He's an excellent blocker. That's what he does best. Second down and three. First, first down Georgia. A yard shy of midfield and good straight ahead blocking. Steve Roberts, the guard on the left side, the 263 pound sophomore, pushed that Razorback defensive line backwards and Owen Kelly tackled it. Well, Roberts in there next to Jack Swan and Jack Swan, just an old salt. You know, started 26 times. Next to him is Greg O'Neill, a couple of big guys on the outside that have been doing an effective job this afternoon. Zaire. Enjoys a touchdown lead as he hands it to Straw, who has running room, and he drives it inside the 45 to the 42. Kemp, the middle linebacker, the junior on the tackle for Arkansas. A one-back offense, and Arkansas is taking a linebacker, Darwin Ireland, out on the slot to the weak side. And then they're running that way. They feel like they there's not going to be any quick contain. That's going to give Max Strong a chance to get wound up a little bit. You're looking right there at the best athlete that this Arkansas defense has. On second and short, does Georgia go deep? They have a down to work with. Oh, Zaire just straight ahead to Strong for the first down. It's first down Bulldogs leading 10 to 3 with eight and a half minutes showing on this third quarter clock in Razorback Stadium. And that's a hobbled Razorback and Tyrone Chapman, the fine linebacker who comes off the field. Go home. Well, obviously, they don't have a lot of depth in that Arkansas defense, and uh, you know, he's one of the stalwarts there. They're going to walk him around a little bit and hope he can get back in as soon as he can. Willie Johnson, number 40, takes his place and steps up into the gap. Bootleg's higher. And throwing. Hassan Graham is there. Near the first down. In fact, it is first down, Georgia. Inside the 28-yard line, and Georgia is on the move. Great counterpunch philosophy by Wayne McDuffie, the offensive coordinator at Georgia. They fake that trap that has been successful for them. Both the linemen are pulling. See them whipping out there. They fake it. Arkansas does a decent job of covering. PV just can't close in time on Graham. The ball spotted at the Razorback 27-yard line. Strong with the pitch. Strong to the 25, the 20, the 10. It is touchdown, Georgia. But wait, a flag lays back at the 20-yard line. And there is a Bulldog shake it up as well. 
I think there might have been a clip at the point of attack as Bernard Williams takes his helmet off. He's a big left tackle for Georgia. The play is coming back. That erases a 27-yard scoring run by Strong. Bernard Williams, number 73 at the top of your screen. He gets a block, and a, a super block by, by Hurst on Ireland. I'm not sure if, if that's what they called. Or it might have been Hassan Graham downfield. The flag came from about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, so that's a, a break for the Razorbacks to get that called back. Georgia has all those fabulously talented skill players, but in talking to the Arkansas coaching staff, the first two men they pointed to in terms of being the keys for Georgia were the tackles and 73, Pup Williams injured, along with the tackle on the other side, Alec Millen, number 71. Exactly, and uh, you saw the hold there by Hassan Graham. He hooked Orlando Waters, and the official saw it. Rakoff knows that he can ill afford to lose this 299-pound offensive lineman. They don't have a lot of depth there. Uh, with Fellows down, he's back, I think, in Athens also in terms of a knee. He's not playing like Fellows number 74, the starting guard. Greg O'Neill's filling in for him. Now they've got Fredenberg and then a converted tight end, Troy Stark who is backing up Williams, so not a lot of depth. He looks to be all right, and that is good to see. How do you weigh close to 300 pounds and have your teammates call you pup? I, you know, that's that's a good question. We, we should ask Claude Felton, the <laughs> super SID at Georgia, that question. That's a good question for him. Still a 10 to three ball game. On first down, the draw, and to the 20 yard line. Georgia drives it. Even further, Terrell Davis on the carry, the sophomore from San Diego. This is a tough play. If you don't get upfield, you're not going to get any pressure on the quarterback. You see the defensive lineman slicing upfield, Vernon Wade. He gets trapped, and boom, they open up a hole behind him, Terrell Davis. The gain is of seven. Second down. And three. Inside handoff, been carrying it for the first time. And fighting for it to the 15-yard line is Frank Harvey. So Georgia, much like Arkansas, is playing quite a few people in the backfield, and it's first down Bulldogs. And they've got folks to play. They've got a multi-dimensional attack. Most teams that we're going to see either throw the ball well or run the ball well, and Georgia certainly can do both. With the skill on the outside, with Hastings, Bohannon, and Zyre's ability to read the right receiver and then this strong line and good running backs. It's a tough offense to slow down for long. The eighth play for Georgia in this drive following the Arkansas punt and Harvey. Kings three. There is Kevin Kempf again, number 57, and we have called his number often. The inside linebacker. Hurst with the touchdown and a field goal apiece. Georgia's Todd Peterson from 36 yards away and right from 26 yards out. Our scoring this afternoon in Georgia marches toward another touchdown on second down. Harvey the fullback, Hurst the tailback. Zaire throws, it is caught to the one yard line. Touchdown Georgia, the tight end Shannon Mitchell. Mitchell holds in his first scoring pass of the season. Good call. Nice execution by the Georgia offense. Nice job of covering by Orlando Waters on Andre Hastings outside. Ray Lee Johnson just can't get there in time. Gary Adams tries to come up and help out. Can't get him, can't keep Shannon Mitchell out of the end zone. The youngster from Alcoa, Tennessee, wants in there too badly. And the extra point looks good. A 12-yard scoring toss from Eric Zier to Shannon Mitchell. More after this word from your local station. Game of the week. It is 17-3 here, Georgia, as the Dogs have marched the length of the field. This will be the first return this afternoon for the Hogs. Dickerson with the football. 
fails to reach the 20-yard line. It's Jock Stevens, the defensive back for Georgia, on the tackle. Georgia did an excellent job moving the ball down the field on the Arkansas defense. They made them go the long way, but finally it was this play pass to Shannon Mitchell that got it into the end zone. Good fake there. Chapman hustling to get there. Gary Adams hustling to get there to keep him out. Just can't do it. Good effort by Shannon Mitchell. Zyers' first touchdown pass of this afternoon, his sixth of the season, Allen, the quick hitch out into the flat. He has it complete to Caldwell. And Caldwell gets but three. Georgia played it very well. And Charles Pledger out there, the cornerback, made the quick tackle. Second down. I'm sure Greg Davis thinking that he's got to get the ball in the hands of Dickerson and Caldwell. They're, they're explosive. They can do something with it. And you also have to spread out that Georgia defense. You just can't get away with running and running and running and running as they start to suck in. You have to have something to spread them out again. The second reception for Caldwell today. After the gain of four officially, here is E.D. Jackson. Hit hard as he comes across the line of scrimmage. Ahead to the 25. And it's Greg Jackson, his namesake at 225 pounds, who popped him. This Georgia defense has been much abused and maligned uh, during the offseason. There's questions about Richard Bell, the coordinator, questions about the talent of the uh, individual players and whether they're going to be any good. And that has really forged them together. They are playing as like a unit now, like I haven't seen them play in the last three or four years. Needing three on third down. The Georgia hopping around. The pitch comes back to Savage, and Savage just does manage to carry Greg Jackson on his back for the first down. It's first down, Arkansas, Greg Jackson with 4.40 for remaining Georgia. in the third. Good job by Kurt Botkin, the tight end here. Opens it up. Good effort by Savage getting it upfield. Savage today now just four yards shy of 100 yards. And Oscar Malone is the tailback with Oscar Gray, the former tight end, the blocking back. Nearly intercepted, incomplete, skipped up, short to Tracy Caldwell. And Jason Allen is struggling to throw the football. Didn't have much room on that one anyway. Good job, good coverage by Georgia that time. They were more locked into a man-to-man man, man, -to -man situation. Caldwell comes to the sideline. Youngster from Pine Bluff. Well, he's an experienced wide receiver. They can make things happen. On second and 10. Throwing. Uh -oh. Unable to hold on. Kato Cotton, who was open and would have had the first down. As he hooked in front of the senior corner, Chris Wilson. Only five completions today for Jason Allen in 14 tries for a total of 44 yards. It's not necessarily Jason Allen's fault. It's been a long time since I've seen this many drop balls in a uh, in a contest. I mean, Jason Allen's been putting the ball on the money, but they have not been hanging on to it. On third down, a four-man rush for the dog. Allen throws, and this one is picked off. The Bulldogs take over at the Arkansas 44, and it's Charles Pledger who makes the interception. And the passing problems continue. More after this from Razorback Stadium, where Georgia leads 17-3. Georgia enjoying a two-touchdown advantage has just picked off Jason Allen in Arkansas territory for the second time today. Allen looks to his left, Pledger trailing inside, comes in and makes a beautiful play on the ball. The youngster from Athens, Georgia. Good job. He's playing corner for Al Jackson, who slid over to strong safety because Mike Jones was injured. So the backups have done well for Georgia. And now they've got the football and a chance to apply the knockout punch first down at Arkansas's 44-yard line. They spot that man a two-touchdown advantage. Perhaps, arguably, 
the best offense in all of college football. And it takes over at the Razorback 44. Tired to Hurts. The reverse to Hastings. Gets a block from his quarterback. Earns the first down as he pulls his way to the 31-yard line. Nearly ran right over top of Arkansas's cornerback, Terry Kennedy. A gain of 12. And this is what you like to see from a quarterback. You know, they know that Arkansas is going to be fired up, trying to make a big play. They try to take advantage of the fact that they pursue so well by running in reverse. And you will see right there on the ground, number 91, Owen Kelly rolling around. And Eric Zier put him there. Great effort by the quarterback. That'll earn some respect, won't it? On the offensive line. Here is Hurst sweeping. Inside the 30. Hurst inside the 25, down the sidelines. Run out of bounds, finally. At the Arkansas 16-yard line, Alfred Jackson stopped it, but not before Hurst strings it out for a first down again. Just an exceptional block here by the fullback and a guard pulling. Look at number 47, Tyrone Chapman, being driven off the ball. He runs through Waters' tackle. Jackson limping to get there. Finally, Ke Kevin Kemp drops him out of bounds. It's over 100 yards for Garrison Hurst, the leading back in the SEC. He picked up 10 there at the 16. Strong may have a clip at the 16-yard line. Owen Kelly, another flag is now thrown. Kelly on the tackle for the Hogs. Got a crackback block there, and a flag went down immediately. Joe Kynes adjusts on defense, slid another player over to the wide side to shut down that wide side running. And that's the man that got cracked back on, I believe. Referee Ron Gilbert looking to spot the ball, and this will be marched off against Georgia. Legal block in the back. White, still first down. Let's watch Owen Kelly work here on Jack Swan. A couple of good players going after each other. That time, Swan gets him on the ground, so you'd have to say he wins the battle, but uh, you know, Kelly is never down and out. He's always up after you. Ray doing a little politicking on the sideline. Come on, boy, give us a break. What's going on here? First down and 20 now for the Dogs, who must penetrate the five-yard line to earn the first. First. In motion to the top of your screen. The draw, too strong. Grab first around the shoelaces by Owen Kelly. And then cut down at the 25 as we check out action from around the country. And Georgia now pulling away from the Demon Deacons. 17 to 7. It is Clemson over Tennessee at Chattanooga. 27 to 3. They too are at the half in Death Valley. Tough loss for Clemson a week ago against Georgia Tech. Again, a gain of one. Zaire often today has worked from this shotgun set. Pressure again. He goes down for a second time. Scott Long was there along with Henry Ford. And it was Henry Ford from Fort Worth, Texas, 265, who finished him off. Good coverage by the Arkansas secondary. Zaire doesn't see it happening, tries to escape. And finally, Henry Ford gets there and pulls him to the ground. But Darwin Ireland was running underneath with Hastings and prevented him from getting open. Good job by Henry Ford. Good coverage by Darwin Ireland. The crowd rumbled. It is third down and 30 following the loss of 11 yards for the Don. Zaire rolls. Here comes the heat. He sets up the screen and it's picked off. This may be a touchdown. Hurst giving chase down to the 15-yard line. It's Darwin Ireland, the linebacker. And Arkansas gets the break it so desperately needs. And that's a break that made itself. Good hustle by Hurst to drag him down and keep him out of the end zone. But Darwin Ireland came up with a play exactly like that last year against TCU, which really turned Arkansas' season around. From then, they erupted into success. But this is a fantastic play. Ireland had had an opportunity.
opportunity earlier in the game to, to pick off a pass. It got away from him. This time, he didn't let it get away from him. And he's pumping down the sidelines. Probably the only guy on George's team that obviously could have caught him at that point was Hurst, but he has got speed. He's 4-6 in the 40. A 41-yard return for Ireland. As Zaire has thrown his second interception and uh, waits some discussion on the field, and this one is coming back. Will Georgia maintain possession? Ron Gilbert, the referee, soon to let us know. I did not see a flag, Tim. I did not see a flag. Holding defense before the interception. Oh. 10 yard penalty. Previous spot. Automatic first down. Joe Kimes, livid. The ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Now again, Bobby Gaston can check me out. I thought the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. You can hold. I did not see a flag. Joe Kynes probably did not see one either. And we were about ready to play. Both the Georgia defensive unit and the Arkansas offensive unit were coming to the line of scrimmage. And now they step it off. Boy, how the pendulum of fate has swung back toward Georgia. A very, very late call. And yeah, all Joe can do is shake his head. And erases the interception and 41-yard return by Ireland. Bohannon out to the far side. Davis in the slot, strong alone setback. Hastings this way. First and 10, Georgia now at the 25. Strong sweeps out Ryan. Stiff arms inside the 20. Near the first down marker at the 15. A gain of 10. Georgia goes back to the running game, gives it to Max Strong. Mac is Max running for a career high today. Alfred Jackson playing on that injured ankle, just can't make the play. Finally, Mac has run out of bounds. The ball spotted just outside the 15-yard line. He didn't last in the wings of the football to earn the first, does Georgia. With his two-touchdown advantage, less than two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And the strong, as uh, he does so well, pounds the middle for the first. Emotionally now for Arkansas, how tough is this? Oh, this is really disheartening. You know, things haven't been going that well, but now you've made the play, the beginning of the turnaround. You know, it's a real emotional, it's an uplifting play and of course you know Joey once they make the call you're never going to get him to change it I've never seen him change the ball to a strike yet you know so great play by Ireland a fortunate break for Georgia first down for the dog Zaire to strong straight ahead football now and strong near the 10 and that Arkansas defense has been out on the field nearly this entire third quarter well, Georgia's defense has been doing a good job keep, keeping Arkansas off the field. Now watch Ireland. He comes in there, he takes on Hurst, keeps his feet, hangs on to Max Strong. And he's quite an athlete. He'll go on and play at the next level. And they need leadership from people like him to keep things together here because you talk about emotionally difficult. I mean, <laughs> this year has been emotionally difficult for these players. Harvey and Hurst in the backfield. Garrison off the right side with blocking, fights his way inside the five-yard line. And it's first and goal, Bulldogs. Tyrone Chapman, the linebacker, stopped him shy of the goal line. Steve Roberts, Alec Millen, just getting some tremendous movement in there with Frank Harvey, Paul Etheridge. Number 86, his great-great-grandfather went to Georgia. <laughs> Can you have Bulldogs in your blood? What does your blood look like if you have Bulldogs in there? A fifth generation dog. <laughs> First and goal from the three, half a minute remaining in the third. Hurst, Hurst at the line of scrimmage is stopped. And the tackle made by Shannon Wright. 
at inside linebacker number 55 as the blocking breaks down up front. Arkansas's defense rises to the occasion. Vernon Wade just slams, slams a Georgia player down inside and causes that play to have to bounce. Steve Roberts, the strong side guard, shaken up. On the play, will leave. The clock temporarily halted with the nine ticks left in the third. Or rather, eight, seven, six, and counting. That'll do it. We are three quarters of the way through this one. The first Southeastern Conference game in history to be played in Razorback Stadium. Back with the fourth and final period of play after this timeout. Coach Joe Kynes of Arkansas hoping his defense can hang on as the fourth quarter unfolds. Georgia leading by two touchdowns, and the Dogs have marched. Ten play to the doorstep here. It is second and goal from the four for Zion. And the pitch comes to Hurst having a great game, and he's into the end zone standing up. Touchdown, Dogs. And this one is broken wide open on the first play of the fourth. 23 to 3 Georgia. An excellent job by Bernard Williams, number 73. He's back up after him. Number 72, Chad. No, it's 52, Paul Taylor, it looked like. Super, super job. Clearing the way for Garrison Hurst. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And here is Peterson on to boot his third PAT of the day. And so on the first snap of the final quarter, Georgia scores again. A timeout in the action, back after this word. Twice today, Georgia has capitalized on interceptions by its defense to drive for scores. And it's 24-3, Garrison Hurts with the four-yard scamper. And once again, Peterson sends this one out of the end zone for Georgia. Arkansas must begin at its 20-yard line. Danny Ford just <laughs> pulled Joe Kynes off the referee. You know, when you're a head coach and uh, you're, you're a head coach of a group of kids like this that have been through so much emotionally and you see them fight, you see them hang in there together and, and you see them create a break and then have it taken away from them, even though if it's holding, it comes back. And uh, so it was holding, that was a break for Georgia, but you just, you just hate it for those kids. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe got a little enthusiastic with the referee, I'm sure. Barry Leonard, the left-hander, in for the second time. It's tapped in the air and incomplete. And Arkansas is fortunate that one was not intercepted. As Danny Ledbetter, the linebacker, number 44, was in the face of the young quarterback, the freshman Lunny. Lunny played in the first half. was three downs and out. Two incompletions, and out he came. And uh, Jason Allen, the starter, returned in his played ever since until this point he has the ability to be a great he is, was a all-state baseball player all-state basketball player top player in the state in football the handoff to malone with a hole across the 25 near the 26. But you don't want to put too much burden on a true freshman and, Joe will know when it's ready to insert him, know when it's ready to, when he's ready to accept the responsibility for directing the offense. That'll be a natural evolution. And so there's not any real competition between Jason Allen and, and Barry Lunny. Arkansas has found first downs hard to come by in the second half. Lunny swings it out, and this one is broken up. And again, it's Ledbetter. Two deflections and a tackle. That defensive series was exclusively his. Lunny, 0 for 4 now in the passing department. Kids from Norman, Oklahoma. That's football country. Yeah, they play some there. In, as a college quarterback, one of the things you have to get used to is throwing the ball up and over the top. You're just going to lob it out to the sides. you got to get it up high enough. Extremely dangerous. Was out there in position to catch it. Rather. A nice punt, Hastings from his 33, the 40, and horse collared out of bounds. In fact, they're still yanking over, yanking at him over there on the sideline. That's Carl Johnson, an outside linebacker who had him around the collar. A 12-yard return. 
Well, Ray was concerned about the uh, all the things that were unroutine about this game, and uh, you'd have to say that he is right. This is the most mature team that he's had, the most consistent team that he's had as he talks to Daryl Drake, his receiver coach on the sideline. A punt, incidentally, for Rayther, who's been solid today, sailed 45 yards. Zayas still the quarterback. Three yards shy of midfield on first down. Sprint draw hurt. The sidelines again. He gains 13. And Arkansas on defense just looks tired. Well, Georgia has a tendency to make you look that way, I think, Paul. Let's check in once again with Big Bob Kessling. Yeah, Ray Goff has just told his offense, if they go down and score a touchdown, put this thing away, they might get the rest of the day off. So, George would like to deliver a knockout punch right now to Arkansas. And one thing, to get the game out of reach, also to get a chance to play a lot of their young players, which they did last week. It's been a huge day for Hurst today. 135-yard rushing, and the meter continues to run as Garrison Hurst runs inside the 20 to the 18. But a penalty marker is thrown back at the original line of scrimmage. So wait, we got holding on Georgia. There's a flag in the field. See how he's always looking for that back door there and he's got the quickness to get to it. He can be going full speed holding. in a step and a half. Offense, 10 yard penalty, spot the ball, still first down. They do a decent job at the point of attack. But he decides to take it the other way. And Bo Hannon's working downfield, and look at him go. I mean, that's one thing that keeps those offensive players on their feet moving all the time. They never know where Garrison's going to end up. Well, that erases a 22-yard shot by Garrison Hurst. Zaire on first and 15. Throws over the middle. Mitchell on the receiving end. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, and Tyrone Chapman hops on his back. And the clock runs with 13.20 left in the football game here in Fayetteville. Georgia just taking a little bit at a time. They pulled their first team out uh, at the end of the third quarter against Old Miss. Ray isn't the type of guy that wants to score 50 points. Uh, you know, everybody's concerned about national rankings, but as you pointed out, he'd like to get some of his younger players some playing time, as Bob Kessler pointed out from the sideline. This is Hardy and Davis in the backfield and uh, there as well joining him unfortunately prior to the snap for Arkansas has Scott Long the defensive tackle prematurely ball before ball the snap. Snap. interior lineman move ball start there's motion ball up there. front it's against Georgia Davis a sophomore began his collegiate career number 33 did playing for George Allen at Long Beach State on Coach Allen's a final football team before he passed away. An unlikely series of events would find you playing your sophomore year in Athens, Georgia. Or Fayetteville, Arkansas. Zaire, pressure from behind, down he goes. Right at the line of scrimmage, Henry Ford ran him down the defensive end. He can move pretty good, Caddy. Yeah, for 260. Fort Worth, Texas. And they think he's got the ability to develop into a, a real, real good defensive lineman. It's coach Joe Pate. He's got the size and the speed. Third needing a dozen. And leading 24 to 3. With 12 minutes to go in the game. Zion stamps his foot. Throws on the run, caught first down. Great footwork by Shannon Mitchell, who knew right where that first down marker was, and he's out of bounds at the Arkansas 28-yard line. It was tap dancing over there along the sideline, was Mitchell. Zaire found him, it's a first down for the Dogs. Good coverage here by Arkansas, flushes Zaire. Kesaw Kelly coming around the top. They lose containment a little bit. Zaire looking downfield. Shannon Mitchell keeps working, boom, <laughs> and finds that first down marker. First set of downs inside the 30. Harvey breaks the tackle for the 23. How many running backs does Georgia have, and how many have they had in the past? We mentioned Herschel Walker, 
Lars Tate, Tim Worley, Cleveland Gary began his career at Georgia. Keith Henderson was just traded from the 49ers to the Vikings. A long and illustrious tradition for Georgia in this its centennial year, continuing at the tailbacks. I played with some great Georgia players. They were defensive last year, so Bill Stanfield, who was the best defensive lineman in the country his senior year. Zyers going for six here for Hastings, who's had but one catch today. Well, he made this one, but he was out of bounds. There have been two Cardinal jerseys on Hastings throughout the afternoon, and they've held number one, has Arkansas, to one catch today. They have, they have shut off Andre Hastings that time. Not bad coverage by Orlando Waters, but Hastings goes up and pulls it down. Zyre lays it out there in a position where if Hastings can't get it, nobody can. He goes up and... Oh! Boy, he was awfully close to acrobatically hauling in another score. Exactly. But he was out of the end zone. A great effort by Andre Hastings. It's third down. Hurt. Cuts back again and may have the first down. Second effort from a fella in Hurst who has carried the ball nearly 20 times this afternoon, and Ireland is in on the tackle. And he doesn't look tired to me. <laughs> and that's, what, that's what those Razorbacks are saying. Isn't this guy tired yet? The ground game has done it for the dogs. And I think they wanted to establish that. They're going to be a tough team to defense. And that's, that's unselfishness on the part of Hurst, too. In the beginning of the game, he wasn't getting the ball that much. They were going with strong, strong, strong. And he was doing a great job of blocking. Here in the second half, they've given the ball more to uh, Garrison. And certainly he performs when he has the ball tucked away. Evans comes to the near side left. Paul Hannon, the junior, the far side right. Harvey and Hurst. It is the second man through at Hurst. A flag flies, as you see, after a gate of one. The umpire threw it. And it's against Georgia. This is the second holding call in this possession for the Dogs and the third penalty in this series against Georgia. That's one area that Ray Goff will talk to his team about when they meet to begin preparations for their next game against Georgia Southern next Saturday. Holding, offense, 10-yard penalty, previous spot, still first down. Ray Goff may talk to him, but Wayne, Wayne McDuffie <laughs> gonna do more than talk to him. You know, you know Wayne and Mac McWhorter's the same way. Good job of moving people off the ball, though. One of them held, but the other ones were doing a good job getting movement in there. Still a good deal of time remaining in the fourth quarter. 24 to three, Bulldogs. First and a long way to go. Zaire from the 40. Oh, the third track. He loses the football, but is whistled down at his knee and touched at the 36 yard line. It is Arkansas's Henry Ford. Or check that. It's Vernon Wade, number 93, the sophomore from Lufkin, Texas, with the third sack today of the quarterback, Zion. Just once his, his pass rushers work. He's working around Jack Swan there, and Zion, yeah, his, he was down. A good job, good effort by Vernon Wade. Zion checks off at the line of scrimmage, and Waltz is back into the shotgun. And this flag is thrown along the line of scrimmage. Did the center move the ball? Something happened in what the officials will call the neutral zone. And Rob Gilbert, the referee, says, come on in, Bobby Caldwell. Let's talk about it. Gray-haired official with his back to you. And picked up, not the touch. So we'll do it again. And most of those, half of them have come in this one possession for Georgia. Oh, 
Swan snaps it for Zaire and Harvey. Won't get more than a yard. That time on defense, Arkansas gave them the double zone look, the spread out look, but right before the snap, they moved it back. Got Nunnerly in the pursuit and containment responsibility. The linebacker Chapman coming off for the second time, shake it up. Willie Johnson again will replace him. A lot of good young players on this Arkansas defense, both offense and defense. They're, they're poised to be a good team. I don't know if they can recover in time to do it this year. Georgia needs to penetrate the Arkansas 10. They're in the first down on third and very long. Zaire to Hurst underneath. Stumbles out of the tackle inside the 30, but still well shy of the first down. Ireland, the linebacker, got him around the shoe tops. It's fourth down. There aren't, aren't a lot of linebackers that can do what Darwin Ireland has done today. He's covered Garrison Hurst man-to-man. -man. He's run with Andre Hastings man-to-man. -man. He's been responsible for containment on traps and runs. And, and so he's tough enough to play the run when he has to. That time he was in a zone defense, but uh, oftentimes throughout the game, he's been in man-to-man -man coverage. Peterson from 45 yards out is good. Todd's second field goal of the afternoon and Georgia's lead increases to 27 to three. For the third time in the second half, Georgia has enjoyed a prolonged march. This time, 10 plays. And it is Peterson that caps the sustained effort on offense with a 45-yard field goal as Georgia pulls away from Arkansas at homecoming in Fayetteville. Only once today has Todd Peterson for the dogs failed to kick the ball into the end zone. There is a flag down, however. Back up field at the 41-yard line. Got to give Georgia's offense a lot of credit. They've been able to sustain these drives even though they've had penalties. They've been able to overcome that. And then you also have to look at Arkansas's defense. One of the things that they were trying to stop was giving up the big play. At least they made Georgia go the long way. Joe has to feel good about that. It was a scoreless football game at the end of the first quarter. Georgia put 10 points on the board. Arkansas with a field goal. That took us to halftime at 10-3. A lone touchdown for Georgia Penalty in the third. And here, a field goal and a touchdown in the fourth. Barry Lunny led his high school team to a 13-1 record last year, played baseball. He hit 459, had an ERA of 1.63. You think he's an athlete? The left-hander throws it very, very deep for Dickerson, and he makes the catch, loses the ball when he hits the turf, and it's ruled incomplete. For a brief moment, he nearly made the catch falling away. Money threw that ball about uh, 55 yards in the air. Well, he's got the gun. There's no question about that. Now, Dickerson slides in behind the Georgia secondary, turns, goes up for the ball. It looks like momentarily he has it. Pledger managed to pry it loose. Ron Dickerson doing a good job exerting his leadership in terms of uh, keeping this team together. Money throwing has his first completion of Peter Pierce. Does not. Another drop pass. He's 0 for 6 today is Lonnie Cotto Cotton. Let him down over on the far side of the field. That's been the name of this story offensively. It's just, uh, it's it's got to be emotionally trying to be on the sidelines and watch that. I, see, it doesn't make any difference who the coach is. You know, if you hit them in the chest with the ball and they don't catch it, uh, you can coach them all you want to. So they don't want to, this is young, a young team. Kato's a sophomore. They don't want to give up on him, obviously, but throw the ball to somebody that's going to catch it. Lenny throws it, incomplete. Very well covered was Kurt Potkin, a tight end. 
through double coverage over there. Randall Godfrey, one of a couple of dogs around him. And uh, Arkansas will punt. Here comes Rayther. You know, this is just, you're in a situation where you can't afford to get behind. If you do get behind, you got to throw to catch up, and you really can't throw that well. You put the guy in that can throw good, and then the people don't catch it. It's, uh, it's tough. Ten-man rush for the dogs. Hastings by himself and another solid effort. Look at this kid. Andre inside his 20, surrounded by Cardinal jerseys. And down he goes. 25-yard line. A five-yard return for Andre and a 27-3 football game in Fayetteville. We are six minutes and 55 seconds away from the finish line in Razorback Stadium. Georgia with a 24-point lead and a new quarterback on the field. And you see that Scott Sisson has done it again for Georgia Tech with a single second remaining. Look at that. A rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. Bill Lewis and his yellow jackets. It's good for them. It's Preston Jones who joins the Bulldog huddle. The senior three-year letterman out of Anderson, South Carolina. Taking over for Eric Zier. And from the eye, breaking a tackle. Carol Davis to the 40. He changes hands with the football as he comes across Carol midfield. Carried. And he rambles into Arkansas territory, and Spencer Brown comes up from the secondary to run him down. Very simple football, but very effective late. Now's the time when this Arkansas defense has to suck it up, as they say in the trade. You know, the game is over, but another one would add insult to injury. So they got to play strong. He's got some players in there that are younger. they got to play tough now, like it counts. Again, Davis. Nowhere to go after the gain of... 26 here, stuffed by Shannon Wright, number 55, the linebacker. Shannon Wright made the tackle. First time I saw this stadium, I was it was 1968 before you were born, and uh, <laughs> you know, I was a junior at Purdue. Was here for uh, one of these FCA conventions and met Frank Broyles, met Kenny Hatfield for the first time. He had just graduated. Uh -huh. That's when they had Bill Barnett running for the Razorbacks and Dick Bumpus in the defensive line. Chuck Dykus catching passes. Exactly. He caught he caught more of those on me. We never played against Arkansas in college, but you know he caught enough on me in, in the pros. Chuck is working here, I think, with the Alumni Association now. Davis inside the 40. Mike Nunnerly, a redshirt freshman, getting some playing time late in the fourth quarter. The strong safety on the step. Well, Ray Goss Ball Club will improve to. Four and one on the year, three and one in the Southeastern Conference, and keep alive its hope of an SEC Eastern Division crown and perhaps playing in the championship game in Birmingham, but it will need some help as Harvey carries the ball. You think they'll be watching the game this season from Baton Rouge, Louisiana? They might have a slight interest in that. <laughs> I think one of the things that concerned Ray was that they might have been thinking more about watching the game in Baton Rouge than they were about playing the Razorbacks. And so that's the thing that he has got to do. He's got to keep their attention focused on the next game, the next game, the next game. And all this talk about, you know, how they can get into the championship game and where they're going to play in the Sugar Bowl, all this kind of stuff. You've got to clear your mind of that. Here is Harvey to the short side of the field and wrestled out of bounds. Nunnerly the first man there. Carried. So in terms of the SEC picture, Georgia's Donnelly upcoming conference games offer Vanderbilt in the middle of October and then three successive road games, Tim. This is tough. To Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. They have to pay a call on the Gator Bowl, of course, to face Florida. And then they'll finish up league play November 14th on the Plains of Auburn. Well, Georgia. That, that, that run won't be as rough as it has been in the last couple of years, but it's still going to be a rough run. Davis. All right, he came through that hole inside the 25 to the 23. He, too, has that instinctive ability to make people miss. 
Yes, and he can accelerate. As you mentioned, he played at Long Beach, Beach State, and when they dropped their program, that gave him the ability to transfer without sitting out a year. So he got right into the action here at Georgia. He gained eight yards there. Did number 33. He's picked up close to 60 this afternoon. Well, perhaps stealing some of the spotlight from the heralded Garrison Hurst. Oh, nice tackle. Owen Kelly, who's played tough all afternoon for the Razorbacks, hit him right at the line of scrimmage. He has. He's played an exceptional game in the middle of that line. And he's the type of guy that you just love to coach. He doesn't have the most ability in the world, but the, he makes the most out of what he has. And as I said earlier on, it's been five years, according to the coaches here, he hasn't missed a workout yet. Preston Jones, 6'3", 218 pounds, under center on second and long, and now checks to a different play. With the I formation, Davis again gets the call, hurdles a tackler, comes to the 20 and the 19-yard line. So Preston Jones, who doesn't play all that often for Ray Goff in Georgia, getting some work in here. And uh, not pessimistically speaking, but he is one snap away should anything happen to Eric Zier of being Georgia's number one guy. Well, he can gun it, and he'll get more protection than he's gotten in the past. And he's got more experienced receivers than he's had in the past. So, And he's got a better running game than he had in the past. But, uh, you know, Ray is going to pretty much keep it on the ground here. He's a, a compassionate man. Davis spinning close to the first down as the pile surges inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. And uh, all sorts of Razorbacks in the middle of that, including Darwin Ireland, the first hog to hit. Carol Davis. Good to see good people succeed, and Ray is a good guy. And, uh, much more comfortable with his role at, 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 as the head coach at Georgia now. Certainly got this program going in the direction that makes all Georgia alumni proud and, and excited about the possibilities of the future. It has been a steady, consistent performance for Georgia this afternoon. As we speak, a bad center quarterback exchange. And it is Arkansas who's recovered the fumble. So much for that. Jones unable to handle the snap, and Arkansas has the football. Henry Ford fell on it. And here comes Lunny to get some work. He is the quarterback of the future, according to the coaching staff, and you mentioned that earlier, Tim. Well, I think the one that performs is going to be the quarterback of the future. There's no question about the fact, though, Paul, that he has more ability. I think he has more of what you're looking for. Uh, the, the, the thing that he, that, uh, that Jason Allen does best is lead and take control. And uh, as a true freshman, it's going to take a little bit of time for him to develop that. And he finally has someone hold on to the football for him. The pass is complete to Johnson. The first catch of a Lunny toss this afternoon. It's a gain of six. He was 0 for 7, was the young freshman. And now number seven trying to do it in successive fashion does. Botkin, the tight end, out close to the 30-yard line. And there's less than two minutes remaining in this game. The first ever SEC game to be played in Razorback Stadium. Arkansas's record will slip to one and four overall, the lone victory coming in Columbia, South Carolina. And one and two now in the SEC. Running. The left-hander throws along the boundary. No, as he is decked back at the 27. Philip Daniel knocked him down, belted Lunny after the pass was away. Another true freshman. They're all over the place. You know, that really is unusual because that's true. I mean, Alabama's playing them, Florida's playing them. Uh, it seems as though the quality of play has really uh, accelerated at the high school level where you're able to get a kid and uh, emotionally he's, and physically he's prepared to compete at this level. Lunny on second down. Has it caught by J.J. Matters. And Matters is into Bulldog territory with 1.21 remaining. 
slanting over the middle on the post round. Lunny finds him for the first down in the late goal. Metters takes it to the inside. Lunny fires it down the middle, and Metters is only 142 pounds. He had much for size, size, but last year he held a state record in Louisiana in the 50 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters, so he can travel. Lunny traveling around in the backfield. Points, throws, and throw it away. And I don't have to tell you that uh, Metters is an 18-year-old true freshman. Exactly. He's another guy. Rest in Louisiana, his uncle John was an all-Southwestern Conference, all-Southwest Conference uh, defensive end here at Arkansas. So the Hogs trying to put some points on the board with 65 seconds remaining. Metters comes off, Dickerson reinserted. When the day began, Ron led the SEC in receiving yards. Money underneath, caught. Tough catch by Oscar Malone for he paid a price. He was hit immediately by Randall Godfrey, the linebacker. For Richard Bell and Dickie Clark and Steve Greer, Frank Orgel are the defensive coaches at Georgia, and they've done an exceptional job this year. They've really brought this crew together. Only Tennessee has scored a touchdown on this defense. And Ole Miss scored late in the game with a few seconds left after they had uh, replaced all their starters. But on the starting defensive unit, only Tennessee has, has been able to get into the end zone. And that's a, that's a big change over the last few years. And the big story when this day unfolded, the arrival of Danny Ford, the left of your picture, joining the staff of Joe Kimes. A man who began his coaching career at Alabama, playing for Bear Bryant, and then as a graduate assistant. He, much like Ray Goff, with an SEC lineage. Yeah, I would think that if Danny is a consultant, he'd suggest to uh, Joe Kynes that their receivers ought to catch the ball. <laughs> I think it would be a good idea. And you can't do anything about that. I'm certainly not being critical of players. Now, I was on defense, and the reason was I couldn't catch. So, <laughs> but, uh, it would have been a different game if they could have hauled some of these balls down early on. Lonnie has this one picked off. That's the third interception today by Georgia's defense, and this is, yes, an 18-year-old freshman, Jock Stevens, who steps in front of the intended receiver to pick it up. Good reaction on the football. Break, broke on a crossing pattern. And of course, Lunny is a true freshman. Spent a lot of time looking where that one was going. Caldwell coming across, couldn't get there in time. Jock picks it off for his first collegiate interception. 45 seconds remain. Preston Jones will finish it up for the Dogs at quarterback. And he hands inside an hour seven. Georgia running back today. Carries the ball across the line of scrimmage. And Mike Thornton out to the 33. So many people to thank. First of all, the athletic director at Arkansas, Frank Broyles, for his hospitality, along with the SID here, Rick Schaefer, and Joe Kynes and his staff. And to Claude Felton, the sports information director for the Bulldogs, along with Ray Goff, who took time out yesterday to chat with us up in the Ozarks. <laughs> it's interesting to see Ray go driving off to a team meeting in a golf cart. <laughs> Greg Fisher, our spotter today. Kevin Trainer with statistics here in the booth. And Nisi Nesmik, our stage manager. Georgia has won today. Congratulations to Ray Goff and the Bulldogs. Beating Joe Kynes, Razorbacks, 27-3. Your final and the first ever Southeastern Conference game to be played out on the campus of the University of Arkansas. And our post-game show will continue right after this word.